Hey, a pleasant good day, Royals fans. This is going to be the latest edition of the Royal Take as we cap off the great weekend with our Reading Royals that go 2-0 and after having an off game that Kirk McDonald got on the team a little bit for, rightfully so, against the Adirondack Thunder on Wednesday. As I said in my weekend preview, I haven't seen this team this year covering the team for Flyers Nitty Gritty. Check out our site over there. Please remember to subscribe down below to keep the channel growing. But I haven't seen this team have back-to-back games where it looks like they just weren't really effective, were fortunate to get a point in the Adirondack game, where they come out, they pounce, um, and they really just took it to the wheeling nailers on Saturday in the 9-1 to game that the uh, Reading Royals, as even Coach Kirk McDonald was saying, Boom Hauer and others, when you run around and take stupid penalties, paraphrasing what they were saying, you, you're going to you're going to be able to, you're going to butt yourself in the butt, basically, if you're the Wheeling Nailers, and that is exactly what they did. Uh, the Wheeling Nailers took way too many penalties out of the game, and the Reading Royals stepped up in tenfold. I would say the Royals' power play, uh, going 50% with 10 power play, 5 for 10, uh, was a star of a game in itself, and the star of the weekend in itself, getting the power play going big time, uh, where in this game, the power play goals were by Morrison, Gooch, Dechara, Ebbing, and then in the first period, it was by Brad Morrison, and then Cressy scored two, Gooch scored another goal, and uh, Brad Morrison in this game scored his 11th, 12th, and 13th goal to pot the hat trick, as well as Cressy having two goals, so obviously those two are the two biggest stars of that game on Saturday, and then I think you got to throw in Trevor Gooch, uh, as the third for that game on Saturday, which you could put in everybody. You could really put the whole team in, like I said, the power play. Saturday, when a game goes like that, you could pretty much throw any everybody in as a star when it's 9-1. to one. Absolutely fantastic game, fantastic power play, and a fantastic game by Pat Nagel, who, as Coach Kirk McDonald said, did make key saves early in the game before our Reading Royals were really established and after the first 10 minutes of the first, and then they kind of hit the ground running after they got rid of those bus legs. But now, moving into Sunday, where my favorite player, well, one of them, and Kenny Halls and Jerkham's brother, stepped up in tenfold against his brother's team again. Sam Hude, Maniscalco scored for the Wheeling Nailers in this game. But Kenny Hallsinger pots two, the first two of the game. And then the hat trick hero from the night before, Brad Morrison, continues to be the offensive wizard, or really in a great way freak that he is, and just keeps putting out numbers at a ridiculous pace. Go look up his pace and numbers, and you know what I'm talking about, and uh, he's been absolutely nuts this year, same with Trevor Gooch, Kenny Hallsinger, I said it on the pregame when I did the Trois Rivier game on uh, color commentating for a running Royals, that I believe he's a guy that will step up um, as certain guys at that point were out of the lineup, and it actually has been the case in tenfold, he stepped up immensely, and he's been great, and he's been fantastic the entire season. But now he's stepped up even more so point sheet wise, and that's really helping the Reading Royals as well. So our Royals, absolutely fantastic weekend against the Reeling Nailers and Clays as Pat Nagel sweeps the weekend, goes two and zero, and our Reading Royals go two and zero, one in a complete dismantling of the Wheeling Nailers nine to one, and the other in a very good tough play game by the Wheeling Nailers that our Royals um, were able to go up early and then continue to defend the lead late and then get that key goal by Morrison that ended up becoming the deciding factor goal in the end. So the stars of the weekend, I mean, this weekend, Pat Nagel coming back playing great. I would also say you got to do Gooch. You got to do, um, obviously, you got to do Morrison. And you also got to put in there as a star the Hosingers and Cressys. That's why I said when you have this good of a weekend, especially bouncing back from that tough game against Adirondack, um, you're going to be very happy as somebody covering the team, as fans of the team, I'm both, and uh, you're going to be very happy with that, and kind of say most guys deserve stars this weekend, because Ebbing did great, Corms did great, um, even earlier in the week when he subbed in the Anaronda game, uh, Chenner did great, Mike Chen, so uh, I think <clears throat> uh, Brant's been playing well, so I think there's different things you can do. It's going to be interesting to see um, what the Reading Royals continue to do with these lines moving forward. That's always the most interesting thing with this team because Kirk McDonald said it in his press conferences all season 
the, the depth on this team is nuts, especially on the defense, but also at the forward court. That's why you're able to spell guys rest. So against Norfolk, it will be interesting to see who we do get rest because Norfolk is a very solid, scrappy team. They don't have the best record, and they're not the best by the numbers, but we know from seeing from seeing them uh, this year that they're a team that's going to scrap with you and usually stay in the game for at least 35 to 45% of it or be one of those teams that can steal a win from you like Adirondack did if you don't play sharp enough. So we have to come in and play a sharp game. But it's going to be interesting to see who's rested against Norfolk since the Royals do have some other tougher opponents coming up where the Norfolk Admirals are not really in that category where they have to go uh, Norfolk, Anirondack, then they play Wooster, then they play Norfolk again. So actually, I kind of take that back. The Royals, I didn't even, other than Wooster, who I think uh, is a team that's fairly pretty darn tough to play. Our Royals don't have the toughest overall schedule going forward. I actually thought they had a little bit of a tougher one in the in the um, week to come. So I actually take that back. Uh, it's a little bit less tough than I thought. But again, when it comes to Wooster, I still think Wooster's a really solid team. Right now, they would be in the playoffs. They're the best team in there. Anirondack, we lost Anirondack, so you got to show up uh, going forward. And against Norfolk, uh, they are always just one of those scrappy teams to play. They might be 10 games under 500. But they're 10 games under 500 in a very tough South Division that they are always just one of those scrap and claw with you um, teams that kind of like years for my NHL also fans with the Blue Jackets are bad. They tend to kind of stay competitive in a game with you. Well, voila. But everybody have a great seven pleasant day. This has been a weekend recap of the Reading Royals sweeping the Wheeling Nailers. They now look ahead to facing the Norfolk Admirals on Wednesday and an Adirondack Friday through Sunday, and then Tuesday and Wednesday of the following week, they face the Wooster Railers, and then after that, uh, that's when they face Norfolk again, and so on and so forth. But peace out, everybody. This has been the latest edition of the Royal Take. As you recap the great weekend sweep by our Reading Royals, please continue to subscribe down below to keep the channel growing to 215 by the end of March.